Hey guys, welcome to a quick walkthrough of my new productivity tool. So this is a tool to help you with projects like the ones you've just seen at the start of the video. It will sort of allow you to feed text automatically to say, for instance, a particle system or to other downstream nodes, or you can make it perform animation within the tool itself. Uh, a lot of possibilities really. And for me personally, I use this probably in every other project. Now I have to say my projects tend to be very much text focused. So your mileage may vary, but in any case, um, let me show you a few simple examples. Right, like this, the example here, it's probably the most basic one, right? It's just a simple title sequence, right? So you, you may think, well, you know, I can already do that. And of course you can, of course you can, but this makes it possible to do it really fast. So for instance, if you uh, scroll in here, sorry, zoom in here, you can see there's source text. I can just update that easily and then bang, it works. Right, no keyframing, no nothing, no multiple tools. Uh, you just update it here. If I want to change the duration and, and such, you can change that here. But let's show a few other examples, right? Uh, let's focus on this one here, right? It has got some nice rotation, right? A bit of easing. Again, nothing earth shattering, yet very simple to set up. Uh, another little example, very fairly similar. But now it's coming in the text from the right, right? You can easily change that as well. If you want to, it to come in from the left, there it is, right? Very simple, one click. Okay, and another similar example. Right, coming from the top. Now, as for something a bit more different, right? Let's look at this example. Okay, the colors may not be to your liking, but you can see, okay, it's positioning these at random positions, right? So that's quite handy. But if you put it in a bit of a different ton the context and add a few other notes, like here, I'm adding a shadow note and then a trails note with the gain set to one, i.e. it will sort of reflect all previous frames as well, and then merge it in with the background. Now, what do we get then? So let's show that. And let's play it. Ah, that is pretty cool, I think, you know. And this can just continue, right? Until the whole screen is full and then we'll just still continue. So very, very, very handy. Now, if you want to take it a little bit further and you may not like this specific example or the particular aesthetic, but it just shows you what's possible, then you could do something like this. Right, so a few more sort of animation type thingies going on here. And um, yeah, so, but I'll tell you a bit more about how it works in a moment when I walk you through the tool. Let me quickly show you where to install this. So in Fusion, right, you can go to Preferences, then to Global and Default Settings, go to Path Map, scroll down to Macros, right click, and then I think typically it would be the first option there. Uh, if you have multiple options, you can show the folder and there you go. So if you put the macro or the settings file that you would have downloaded in here, then it will work straight out of the box and then you're done, right? So once you've done that, then you can basically do control spacebar and type in multi or multi string. And there you go. There you've got your tool. When you're on a fusion page, go to templates, show folder. And then don't save it here. Go back to the Fusion folder, mac macros, and save it there. Now it may require a restart of Resolve. I can't really recall, but you'll need to try that yourself. Now let's get started with the actual walkthrough. So let's add our newly added tool. Multi string, there it is. Let's display it here. And then one of the first things here on the right, right here, here we can change the text. So uh, all the text, right, the individual feeds, so the first one will go first and the next are comma separated. Very, very important. If you don't do that, it won't work properly. Uh, spaces between the commas and the text are not needed, right? If you want to have two separate lines or three, use hash hash 
to separate the lines. That acts like a line break, right? So that's the very first important thing. You can change the text here and you will want to do that. Secondly, right, as per always, font, color, etc., etc., you can change. And of course, in the shading tab, as per BAU, or business as usual, you can change all the various elements or switch them on, uh, on etc., etc. It works exactly the same. Now, in terms of the overall feed, the important thing is, well, the most important thing is the duration. This will tell you as to how many frames uh, will there be between the different feeds. So here it's 96 frames in total. All right, important. If you want the animation to start a bit later, you can set the start frame to something positive. Uh, let's leave this method at the moment as it is. I'll explain that later. Um, the animation option, right? You have the in and out time. That's like, see that as the fade time. So that will, at the start of a word, you can have the option to do something like a fade or a uh, rotation or a move. And uh, this will tell you how long it is in and out. So it basically says out of the 96 frames, 36 will be spent on animating it in. Then there will be a pause of a second and then 36 for the out intro, right? So these two work in conjunction. The 96 is the total time. The 36 is for in and 36 for out. Okay, hope, hope, hope that makes sense. So for instance, right, we've got this. It's all relatively slow, right? Nice for a documentary or something like that. If we want to make it a little bit faster, right? We could say, okay, I only want to have 48 here. But what will happen here, right? You see it's fading in, but then it pops out. Reason is that we've got 40 frames in total, 36 are spent to go in there, and then it doesn't really have enough time to stay on and then do the outro, right? So what we need to do is lower this. So if we do it now, right? Then it all works properly. You may have noticed as well that the words loop because the loop is on. Now you may or may not want that, but it can be handy. What you also can do is you can select random. In this particular case, it will randomly show a word. Could be that um, it will be two times the same word in a row, right? The fewer words you've got, the higher the likelihood would be for that to happen. But in any case, in some cases, it's really handy, especially if you have like maybe a hundred words, setting it to random for certain projects, that may be the desired approach. You can also set keyframes manually for the words, but then it doesn't work with loop. And to be honest, I never really use it, but it is possible. And I'll just quick, quickly show you. Here, you see, it's all a bit weird, but if you look at the spline and the multi-string, you've got this manual index, right? And if I'll Update this, you see here the discrete item. So this is the index, this is word one. Then it jumps to word four, then to three, then back to one, right? So, and the timing in between can vary. So for certain projects that may be handy, I hardly ever use it. I think I've used it once, right? But the option is there. Let's close this out and let's look at some of the other options. Uh, you've seen the rotate in the examples, right? So that just means it's rotating in. Oh, and let's sh switch the manual index off. Let's set it to auto again. So auto really means that it will go through the words as they were entered, right? Uh, I'll set it back to loop and, right? And we've got this nice little animation. Now, if I also want to have actually the number of rotations, so it's minus one, but I, the, the minus basically means it's rotating in a certain direction. If we make it one, right, it moves in the other direction. But if we want to have more rotations, like three, right, then you get something like that. Now let's switch the rotation off. And let's uh, look at the move. Right. Then you got your move working. Now, maybe this is the opportune moment to have a little look at the easing options. 
as you can see there's easing applied and you probably already guessed this is done by using an animation curve so all you need to do is go to the modifier tab and then you can select the type of easing uh, this will apply to all the animation i have not added separate animation options for rotation separate ones for fade it applies to everything okay the next one up is the placement randomization right if i click that then each word will be on a new random position right and that goes for the end position and the range depends on the minimum x, x max minimum y max etc and you can also then apply a random z rotation you get something like this and how extreme you want to have that is by you can set the variance higher for instance to 360 right this particular example may not look good but in any case the option is there and you can do well, really cool stuff with it now uh, that's almost all of it but there's one really a power tip and that is by using this animator that is being used by all the animation right and that's driving it now the cool thing is is you can use these in expressions right um for instance if we actually let's delete this one and go start with a fresh one so in this particular example right we see this coming up what if we would want the size to be affected as well well that is not a standard option right now but what you can do if you look here size and if we right click add an expression uh, sorry for all the scrolling and then basically the size that was the size you wanted to have and then just type in times animator Right, and if you now play it, right, you see this being used. And you can do this with pretty much any parameter in here. Right, so let's make this a little bit faster. Let's make it 72. And make this maybe 24. And then also add a Z rotation. Then you get this. right so as said you can use that in any type of parameter uh, one final tip in the example here right i had all these different colors uh, that's just an expression I, I touched upon that a bit but let me show the expression to you so that you can use it as well should you want to right so if i show the shading tab i just have an expression on the green channel so the expression i use here Right, so what I do here is I set a random seat and well, you may just want to copy it, this over, but it essentially uses the duration parameter, right? The 72 frames or the 96 frames, frames. And then every time you basically go to a new word, that's basically what this boils down to, it will generate a new random seat. And then based on that random seat, it will return a random value. Now this value random, and by default returns a value between zero and one and that's exactly what we want so if you actually um would play this um so let's show just this and you can see here that this is changing all the time now what you could also do right if the duration is really short you can also of course right click and instead do a modify with a shake or something um when you do it with this expression you ensure that it only changes when you go to the next word that is the advantage if you do something else like adding that shake or perturb or whatever then it doesn't take it into account so yeah if you want to use that expression you've seen it you can copy it over and there you go so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this little walkthrough i hope you can come up with some cool stuff and if you've got any questions as per always Leave a comment below. 
Um, and I would also love to see anything you would have made with it. And lastly, if people are still watching, please sign up to my Patreon. That really, really is a big motivator for me. I'm spending a lot of time and effort on these projects. I love doing it, don't get me wrong. But it's always nice getting that little bit of extra motivation by people signing up to my Patreon. And thank you to all my patrons so far. Your support has been much appreciated. Take care. Bye-bye.